What's up, YouTube? It's Max Clausen, and yes, I am alive. <laughs> a few reasons about why I've been gone from video making for as long as I have. First off, the most important one is that real life and, you know, a real job has you really busy, and then when you get home, you're really tired. But I have been wanting to do a whole bunch of deck profiles for you guys, but I just never really had the motivation i guess i would say to just to make one but in a while in a long time i've been asking a lot of stuff's been shown cyber dragons getting support uh what other that getting support well basically cyber dragons flames of destruction is coming out of soon and just recently as in today we get layer of darkness which i was actually super pumped off oh, the glare Super pumped and getting just because this deck has so much disruption plays and the main focus of this entire deck is kind of like Well, not kind of like monarchs, but you basically tribute a lot in this deck and that gives a lot of old school Tributing cards so much power in today's metagame and there's already a whole lot of people making deck profiles deck variations of this deck and I just feel very strongly like, this deck could be, like, tier 1 or tier 0, I guess, in a way. Because if you haven't seen any videos or, re or deck profiles of this already, you'll, you'll just, like, see that this deck has so much potential of being one deck, a deck that's very scary. And a lot of people have powerful variants, like I said, being this with Infernities, BAs. So, yeah, that's my little explanation of how things have been going, how I've been... Keeping in track of Yu-Gi-Oh! today, but we're not here about that. We're here about my new deck profile, Layer of Darkness. Just picked it up tonight after going to a, to my locals for the first time in a long time. And, yeah, from what I've been seeing, it's very powerful and it keeps impressing me day in, day in, day, day in and day out. So, this is my thrown together budget-ish version, as I do have cards in here that are different rarities from well only a few there's some cards in here that are not in the structure deck but you do want to run them when you get them so yeah pardon me so it's not really budget from the box it's just my own personal little budget name for it but enough rambling we'll just get into this there's no extra deck for this deck for right now but there will be when i make the more competitive like version first off we're starting off with Three of your true boss monster, Darkest Diablos. Now, this guy is just redonkulous, I swear to God. First of all, his effect is if a, mon if a dark monster on, the field on your field is tributed, you can special summon this guy from your hand or graveyard. So he's essentially like an astrograph sorcerer. And I believe his effect can work even if you like add him to your hand some way and you know, something's been tributed already and he has that effect like he knows something's been tributed. If it like a lot of ins and outs of this deck aren't really truly found yet. But if you guys do find out, make sure you leave it in the comment section below. But you know, save that for the end. And the other effect is he can tribute one dark monster on the feet on your field. Well, on Tribute 1 Dark Monster in general. And then your opponent selects one card from their uh, hand. And they place it to either the top or bottom of the deck. So it really is very controlly in a way. And the best part is about this guy. He cannot be tributed or targeted by your opponent's card effects. Which is really, really, really amazing. Meaning you cannot kaiju this. You cannot fairy tale snow this. Anything that would tribute him, even in a mirror match, you just they can't do anything to him. Like he's unstoppable like that way. You literally have to beat over him, or can he be destroyed by card effects? Uh, uh nope. Well actually, hold on. Yeah. Okay, he just can't be tributed or targeted, which are really two important things that are in today's meta. So yeah, three darkest diablos. Next you run three Arima. This monster is just really strong. It's pretty much a pseudo terraforming, being that you can add layer of darkness from your deck straight to your hand. And uh, what's other his effect? I just know the first simple one. 
you can tribute one dark monster and then draw a card. Or if you tributed a dark monster other than himself to activate that effect, you can add one dark monster with 2,000 or more defense from your deck instead. So he's a search. So he's a terraforming. So he's a searcher for both your field spell and this thing, which is just really crazy. Um, sorry about the glare again, guys. The light is just too good. The darkness it hurts. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he's really strong, and so you want to see him as much as possible. Just to either be a draw, which will most likely be drawing, obviously, and searching your field spell. And great, great 1700 beat stick, but no defense, but keep that in mind. Next, you run 3 Lilith, Lady of Lament. Now, this woman is just insane. First of all, when she's normal summon, her attack value becomes a thousand. So she weakens herself, sadly. But that's only when she's normal summon. So if she's special summon in a way, she keeps the two thousand boot, the two thousand stat. But her effect is you can tribute one mo dark monster and then choose three normal trap cards from your deck, and your opponents ran randomly selects one of them for you to set onto your field. And that's really amazing. And that is a quick effect too. Keep that in mind. So basically, with her with her effect, you can tribute something and then just you know send it for the cost. And then find three any three normal traps of your of your deck, which being any of the viruses, uh revival tr trap that's not continuous. Or even all the mirror forces, which is really crazy. So this this one monster has literally made every normal trap card in the game searchable, which is ridiculous. I don't believe any monsters had that much of a of a power power boost in the game, to my knowledge. And <laughs> the best part is she's also zero defense too, which I will get into much later, as I said before. Uh, is there anything else you is supposed to do? Nope. Oh, and one more thing is that the other cards you sh you searched for they get shuffled, not sent to the graveyard, which is really strong. And your opponent actually cannot ash forehead this because you are not adding the card to your hand; it is being set to your field, so their ash can't even activate to stop her. That's actually it for the main monsters from the structure deck that you want to get next off for the supportings we have the one vanity fiend just to be that guy we all should know what vanity fiend does but if you don't basically neither player can special summon so you can literally summon this and sit on it and your opponent will just sit there just like okay so just one vanity fiend you can always you can always get rid of it at any point you want to just by tributing or you know doing anything with a card effect so there's one of that, and the three of three Stygian Street Patrol. Now this is a very old school monster that came back in the structure deck. What his effect is basically, if he's in the graveyard, you can banish it to special summon one fiend with two thousand or less defense from your hand to the field, which is an easy special summon, which can get you Vanity's fiend if you have it in your hand. So it's a pretty good monster for that, and it's a good sixteen hundred beat stick. Yeah. Next, for the two ofs, you have your own kind of kaiju, that being Duke Shade, the Sinister Shadow. You can tribute one tribute of Dark Monster. You can you control and special summon this card. And if you do, this card gains 500 attack for each monster tributed to summon this way. And if this monster was normal or special summon, you can add one level 5 or higher Dark Monster from your graveyard, or I believe deck it is. From the great, yeah, from your graveyard back to your hand. So this can literally recycle Vanity Sphine or Diablo should you need both of them. But you're obviously just gonna use it to like, you know, summon Diab, add Diablos back sh should you need be or Vanity Sphine. Really see Vanity Sphine more just for that because it's already special summon. Get it back tribute. Next off, I run two Phantom of Chaos just because you have a lot of dark monsters that. You can activate their effects from the graveyard to just do something, do stuff with. His effect, if you don't know what Phantom of Chaos does, is you can banish any dark monster in your graveyard and he copies this mo that monster's effect. 
So it can literally become a Arima or even Lilith should you need their effect again to distribute them off. Which is really good, and he uh, and it also has zero defense. You'll see. Hopefully, you figured out why I keep saying that. Next, I run one Prometheus, King of the Shadows, just for that one monster. Just because you have a whole deck of twenty mob. This whole deck is nothing but dark monsters, so you literally have nineteen monsters to banish for his effect, which states for you can banish any amount of monsters when this dark banish any amount of dark monsters. From the graveyard, when this card is normal summon, and he gains 400 for each one. And this card used to be in contingent back then with Dad, Dark Arm Dragon, Dad for short. Just like really mess with your graveyard to summon Dark Arm Dragon, which is a nice little tech in this deck now that I think about it. But yeah, he will be used for like late game if you draw him and you just need like a power boost just to go full on in. And hopefully, you don't have anything like a Mirror Force or a. God forbid, a magic cylinder. Next, for the last one of you run the one tour guide. Really great that they reprinted her in this set. If you don't know her effect, she can basically, when she's normal summon, you can special summon one level three or low, level three or lower fiend type. Yeah, one level three fiend type for your mo for your deck. But its effects are negated, so you would obviously search out your Lilith. And her effects will be negated, so she'd be the 2,000 attack. But it's okay, because if you use Lilith's effect, she tributes. You have to tribute herself, sadly. And once she leaves the field, that effect negation is no longer in in void. Well, you know, no longer applied. So she can still search you your normal trap cards. And then it also, you know, tributes off Diabolus' effect. So that's one of that. And you have the Curry Bandit, which you can also summon off of Tour Guide. And if you don't know Curry Bandit, his effect reads that in the end phase, you can send it, you can tribute this card, excavate the five, top five cards of your deck, and add any spell or trap so, so, like seen amongst them, and then send the rest to the graveyard. A great way to like thin out your deck and search for things you want, like, a, like one of the viruses or one of your spells, like a lore or whatever. And there's also another monster that tributes himself to get off Diablos' effect. So you really focused on getting Diablos just because he's your ace monster. That's it for the monster lineup. All 20 monsters, as I said. And we'll move on to the spells. Now, literally, your heart and soul of this deck, if without it, this deck cannot run, is Lair of Darkness. Welcome to the Shadow Realm, pretty much. This card... Is like zombie will it, may, but it doesn't follow into the graveyard, sadly. But what it does is all monsters on the field are dark monsters, period. No ifs, ands, or buts. And one of the best effects about it is if you would tribute a monster to activate a card effect, you can tribute one once per turn. You can tribute a monster of your opponents as if you controlled it. So if you would like. Econ or whatever, whatever else may be, you know, one of your viruses, basically anything that would activate a card effect that requires you to tribute, you can do that to your opponent's monster to basically get over a problematic monster on the field, be it a crystal wing, uh, tr um, I don't know, maybe like a barrel load dragon. Like, pretty much any of the top meta cards today, you can just get rid of it with this. This deck would not function without this card. And during the end phase, during the turn this card was face up on a field, however many dark, however many monsters were tributed this turn, you summon that many shadow tokens to the field, either be it your field or your opponent's. So this is a good way of generating tokens for Link summoning. And all the tokens are a thousand defense and attack. So yeah, but keep in mind if you attribute something of your opponents and they contribute as well, they'd be getting tokens too. So just keep that in mind. Also to help, you get three of Lord Darkness. The entire deck is dark. Why do you not run this? If you run it at two, I guess you can get away with it because there are some things you don't want to banish. But in the whole case, it's literally just your pot of greed. And as you may notice, it is super, as I had super, but Allure of Darkness does come in the structure deck, reprint it, which is great. 
so you can easily get essentially three pot of greeds for no reason. Next, for the two ofs, I run two recurring nightmare. This is the reason why I've been stating that your monster has zero defense. And that being is that recurring nightmare states target two dark monsters with zero defense in your graveyard and add them back to your hand. Which is quite a few, that being Phantom of Chaos, your Lilith, or your Arima, which is really strong. And it could be other monsters in the deck, like Ram Manju from the structure deck. But you don't but I don't run them. You can in your own deck. This is all my own personal choice picking. So yeah, really great of recycling your Arima, your Phantom of Chaos a little bit, just so you get the effects again. And the two scapegoat is cards is fi Fires of Doomsday. Pretty standard card, just like Scapegoat. You can activate this, summon two shadow tokens to the field. These can be used in for defense or you know, just Tributing should they live that la live for the turn, and a lot of people you will see this in a few layer of darkness decks because it's just too good. The, the, the tokens are dark, the entire deck's dark. Why not run it? And then the last two of I run, which you which aren't in the structure deck, but you kind of want to see it. Two terraforming secret rare, yeah, not budget, but you know. Anyway, two, two terraforming, search out your field spell, because you don't want to always rely on Arima to get you your field spell. Because Layer Darkness, three, Arima, that's three, six, and these two, you essentially have eight ways of getting Layer Darkness to your hand, so it's really great. That's it for the spells, and now for the trap lineup, it's very, very small, but very cheeky. Three, Crush, well mine, Crush. This card is just really, really stupid in this deck. This structure deck, anyway. <laughs> just for the simple fact, like, thanks to this today's metagame, like, if you know your opponent has something in their hand, like an evenly match or an Ash Blossom, just activate this, call it, and they send that to the graveyard. It was obviously used back a lot in Burning Abyss, just so they can send the monster to the graveyard. But it can still see a lot of game play just because all the viruses that you get from the structure deck, they do let you see your opponent's hand. So then you can just flip this up, call the card, and they are literally top decking. Next up, I play three back to the front. Also not in the structure deck, but you do, but you can search it out with Lilith, so why not run it? I mean, you can just run any other normal trap card in the structure deck. But I choose back to the front. Call the Haunted, Normal Trap, just summon a monster in defense mode. Simple and clean. And then the last two cards, Eradicated Epidemic and Grin Grinning Virus. Well, Grinning Gray Virus, but I like the Japanese name better. Eradicated Epidemic, tribute a monster with 2,500 or more attack. Destroy all spells and trap cards your opponent has on the field and draws for the next three turns. Grim Grinning, now this card is actually very weird, but I just wanted to run it just because it's the structure deck and it's the new virus card. Basically, you tribute a monster with 2,000 less attack. Is it less? Oh man, yeah. Oh, actually, 3,000 or less attack. And your opponent destroys one monster in their hand or deck of their choice for every... For every 500 points that monster had, keep that in mind. And if you attributed a monster with 2,000 or more, you actually destroy all. You destroy the monsters. Yeah. Um. To activate, yeah, you look at all the cards your opponent draws. So it becomes. So if you tribute something with 2,000 or more, it becomes like on any of the other viruses, which is pretty easy in this deck, I guess. With, you know, Lilith and Diablos. So, yeah, you tribute your monster. If it has 2,000 or more attack, you look at all the cards until they draw. And any monsters they draw with under the attack points, 500 being the minimum, you destroy them. And the best part is, cards destroyed by this card's effect cannot activate their effects that same turn. So, it's really good counter to things like BAs or... Any other deck that really revolves around their monster effects being used in the graveyard. When, really, my only pers 
choice of running it. You don't have to run that if you want to. There are better other cards like Full Force Virus, Deck Devastation. But I just wanted to run this just because can side it out and whatever. So that's pretty much it for this deck profile. This was actually just my budget-ish version of it. I will be doing a different version of it later on in the future. And sorry if any of my explanations just, you know, weren't fully on point. Again, this deck is just now new. We've only been able to test it online and stuff. So now people are starting to play it and try and get the feel of the deck. And, you know, eventually we'll, everybody will find out ways to really make this deck strong. But anyway, enough rambling for me. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you want to see more, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'll be trying to update more of my Yu-Gi-Oh deck profiles since now this deck is out. I'm going to be playing it for a while in contingent to my blue eyes. And, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, again, thank you all for watching. And, yeah, hope to catch you all in the next video.